When we are trying to decide if a reaction is going to proceed by substitution or elimination, the first thing that we should look at is the substrate, the molecule that has the leaving group, because for many types of substrates, we're able to narrow down the number of different substitution and elimination mechanisms they're able to do. This, however, is almost always not going to be able to completely determine whether the reaction is substitution or elimination. There, most of the time, will be multiple options available. So the second thing that you should consider when you're trying to determine if a mechanism is substitution or elimination is the reagent itself, whether you are reacting with a nucleophile or reacting with a base. Now, there's a very subtle difference between a nucleophile and a base, and a lot of substances are simultaneously nucleophilic and basic because they have a lot of similar properties. Let's start by just distinguishing the differences between nucleophiles and bases. Bases are substances that want to be protonated, meaning that they want to get the H plus ion, they want to do an acid base reaction. Nucleophiles are substances that want to attack carbocations and many things want to go after H pluses and also C pluses at the same time, which is why there are a lot of compounds that can be nucleophilic as well as basic. One of the other differences between nucleophiles and bases is that nucleophiles are typically big, and this means that they are polarizable. So that just means that over the, the surface area of your nucleophile, you're able to get some distribution, uneven distribution of charge, like a buildup of negative charge on one side of the nucleophile. And that just means, um, or that's just due to the fact that it's large. So let's start making some lists of nucleophiles and bases. Uh, and things that are nucleophiles as well as bases. And let's start with a list of substances that are strong nucleophiles and also strong bases. So these are going to be substances that are um, both nucleophilic and basic at the same time. And these are our oxygen O- minus compounds like hydroxide, methoxide, OCH3, ethoxide, OCH2, CH3, tert-butoxide, OCCH3, 3, and basically any one of our alkoxides. These are molecules that, or ions, that want to get an H+, they also want to attack a C+, they don't really care which they go after. Um, so these substances, because they are strong nucleophiles as well as strong bases, they do both elimination and substitution. And because they are strong, they have that, that full formal negative charge, they are very reactive, meaning that they are attackers. They go after the substances, the, the substrates. So specifically, not just that they do elimination and substitution, but they have a preference for E2 and SN2, which are both mechanisms that require our reagent to attack immediately, to not wait for the formation of a carbocation. These substances, these strong nucleophile strong bases, typically do both E2 and SN2 at the same time. So that just means that when we have a reaction, some of the hydroxide ions will be attacking in such a way that they do the SN2 reaction, and some hydroxide ions will be attacking in such a way that they do the E2 reaction, because again, they're not really uh, very picky. They just want to attack something, H plus or C plus, it doesn't make a difference. 
So those are our strong nucleophiles and strong bases. Let's also now talk about our molecules or our compounds that are weak nucleophiles and simultaneously weak bases. So these are substances that are not really motivated to get an H+, and they're also not very motivated to attack a C+. These are going to be the protonated versions of our strong nucleophile strong bases. Protonated meaning that they just have an extra hydrogen on them. So the protonated version of hydroxide is just H2O. The protonated version of methoxide is HOCH3, HOET, and basically any alcohol. None of these guys have formal charges on them at all, which is what makes them weak. They're not very motivated to do much of anything. These, because they're not motivated, they're not going to be doing the attacking mechanism. They're not going to be doing E2 or SN2, which requires attack. These guys are going to be doing E1 and SN1, waiting for the formation of a carbocation before they actually do anything. And again, this is usually done simultaneously just like with our strong nucleophile and strong base. So that means for both of these, if you have a strong nucleophile, strong base, or if you have a weak nucleophile, weak base, the chances are good that you're going to be doing the E2 and SN2 reaction at the same time, meaning that you have to predict the products of both of these reactions that are being formed at the same time. And the same with weak nucleophile, weak bases. Now we do have some substances that are strong nucleophiles and they're not basic. These are compounds that just do not function as bases. They are going to be the conjugates of our strong bases. So Cl minus, Br minus, excuse me, conjugates of our strong acids. I said bases. Chloride, bromide, and iodide, all conjugate bases of our strong acids, which means that they're very, very, very weak bases. And then also our sulfur nucleophiles, HS minus, as well as the protonated version, H2S, and RSH. All of these are substances that are good nucleophiles, meaning that they really do want to attack that carbocation, but they're not very interested in being protonated. Because they are good nucleophiles, they will do our substitution reactions, SN1 and SN2. They will not do SN1 and SN2 simultaneously. That's not possible. And uh, we talked um, in the substitution material, we talked about distinguishing between SN1 and SN2. There's a couple of factors that we can use to, to help us predict if a reaction is going to be SN1 or SN2, such as looking at the solvent or looking at the structure of the uh, electrophile. And I will will refresh on that in some later videos. And then last but not least, we have some compounds, not very many, that are strong bases, but are not nucleophilic. Very few of these, we have the hydride ion, which is a very strong base and not nucleophilic, mostly just because of its size. It's too small to be polarizable, which is one of the criteria for being a nucleophile. Then we also have two compounds, one abbreviated DBN and the other abbreviated DBU. These both also are strong bases that are not nucleophilic. Because these are not nucleophilic, these are only going to do elimination. They're only going to do um, the reaction that bases do, which is elimination. And because they are strong bases, they are only going to do E2. They're strong bases, meaning that they're going to attack. They're not going to wait for the formation of a carbocation, which would be necessary for E1. So the hydride, which is really the most common one you're going to see, only thing that it's capable of doing is the E2 reaction.